Breaking news begins the WHS 11 19 right here at 11. We're following breaking news out of the Russell neighborhood in West Louisville, where Louisville Metro Police are investigating a reported shooting tonight. An LMPD spokesperson says the call came in at 930 tonight near 10th and Muhammad Ali 10th and West Muhammad Ali. That's not far from downtown Louisville. Right now we're still waiting for an update from police about who was shot and their condition. When we get that information, we will pass it along to you right here on the night team. And of course, it'll be on WHS11.com, our website. Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining us. I'm Doug Prophet, also new tonight. A big development in the case of the Oldham County High School teacher Max Emerson shot and killed in Washington, D.C. this week. D.C. police released a photo of their suspect late today. WHS 1119's Taylor Woods talked to Emerson's mother tonight about that photo and why she insists her son didn't know that man. Taylor? Well, Doug, I spoke to Chandra Emerson, the mother of Max Emerson, and she says that it is hurtful that D.C. police have said that Emerson knew the suspect when that is not true. Police in Washington, D.C. late Friday releasing this photo. The man they say is their suspect in the killing of Oldham County school teacher Max Emerson. The 25-year-old was shot and killed on the campus of Catholic University this week. Police say the man took off. I mean, it sickens me. Um, I'm, I'm glad that the, the photos are pretty clear. I feel like it'll be easier to, to identify him. We talked to Emerson's mother, Chandra, shortly after police made the photo public and put up a $25,000 reward for information. Is that going to, is that going to help somebody to actually really turn somebody in? I don't know. I, I, I would hope. Emerson's mother and brother were in Washington eating when the shooting happened. She goes back to check the Snapchat message she says she got from Max. I was looked at the first snap again and I figured out what it said, which was help being robbed at gunpoint. Emerson was a social studies teacher who was passionate about history, and that led him to an opportunity for him to teach a law and justice class this upcoming school year, which was why his family and him were in D.C. this week. <laughs> He was excited because he was going to get to teach law and justice next year. It was a new class, a, an elective class, and he was going to get to do that. After the shooting, D.C. police said Emerson and the suspect knew each other. That that is not, you know, that is not, it's hurtful, it's hurting us, and it's wrong um, to... Chandra Emerson says she doesn't know who that man is in the photo and she knows Emerson doesn't know him either. And still she questions why D.C. police said Emerson and the suspect knew each other. We were and are still very concerned about why that narrative is being why that was being pushed so much. Although this has been a nightmarish tragedy, Emerson is thanking the community and everyone for their support during this hard time. And I think that that's what I want people to know, that that our God, that he is going to make a difference in, in this terrible, terrible, terrible tragedy. And the Emerson family is still in the process of planning funeral arrangements. Once we know that information, we'll be sure to let you know on air and online. In studio, Taylor Woods, WHAS 11 night team on your side. Taylor, thank you. Well, let's hope this family gets some answers in soon on this. Oldham County High School has now set up a way for students and families to offer their condolences to Max and the family. They are opening the school next week from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. for families to drop off cards for the Emerson family. More new information coming in about the Bowling Green police officer who suffered life-threatening injuries last night in a shooting that happened at a Bowling Green car dealership. The Bowling Green police chief identifying the officer today as Matt Davis, saying he was shot several times. Kentucky State Police investigating the shooting say the suspect is dead, but they have not released any details about how the shooting happened. Now the community and fellow officers are focused on supporting Officer Davis. It's going to be a long road for him. Uh, he was shot numerous times and uh, has extensive injuries. So uh, it's going to take a little while to, to recover from this. And he is so injured. It is amazing how injured he is and still alive that he needs to have every bit of focus on his healing. Police say Officer Davis is in critical but now stable condition after having surgery. The Kentucky Fraternal Order of Police has created a fundraiser to support him and his family. You can find a link to that on our website, whs11.com. 
The Indiana State Police Trooper Aaron Smith was laid to rest today. Smith died after being hit by a car during a stolen car chase in Indianapolis last week. Hundreds of people gathered for his funeral service this morning, including Indiana Governor Eric Holcomb. It and the procession later were shown live by the Indianapolis TV stations. Many described Smith as selfless and someone who really cared about his community. Well, I was older by six months. I was neither bigger nor stronger than Aaron. And every time Aaron would defend his little cousin because Aaron defended the marginalized. There was something about him that stood out. It made him special, and it was so obvious to me that he cared so deeply about others. Smith received police and military honors as he served both as a state trooper and a sergeant in the Indiana, Indiana National Guard. One person is dead and two others are hurt after a crash that happened on the Greenbelt Highway in southwest Jefferson County. LNPD tells us it happened about 1.30 this afternoon. Investigators believe a car turning off Bethany Lane hit a car heading north on the Greenbelt Highway. EMS took three people to the hospital. The passenger in the car turning from Bethany Lane died from their injuries. The two other people are expected to survive. And the police also investigating a crash that killed a teenager yesterday on Shepherdsville Road. Police say the teenager was driving on Ron Wood Drive towards Shepherdsville Road when she failed to yield as she entered the intersection, crashing into another car. The teen was taken to the hospital where she later died. The driver of the other car was also taken to the hospital with serious injuries. Lexington will be the center of Kentucky's new gambling future on Monday. That's when many expect the Kentucky Horse Racing Commission to take the next steps in launching sports betting for the Bluegrass State. But is it going to be in time for the start of the NFL season? As some Kentucky leaders had hoped, WHS 1119's Connor Steffen takes a look at that. As Kentucky's five plus year wait shrinks to mere months. Kentucky is a sports crazy state. The question looming over the Commonwealth. How soon can Kentuckians place their bets? But I'm, I'm, I'm not a big betting person. Kentucky I Senate Majority Leader Damon Thayer isn't a betting man, but he's willing to make this wager. But I, I predict there's an 80% chance that we'll have sports betting at retail locations at Kentucky racetracks by the NFL kickoff. That hinges on a special meeting at Lexington's Red Mile Monday between members of the state agency overseeing sports betting, the Kentucky Horse Racing Commission. And what we're expecting to happen Monday is they're going to review and approve uh, sports betting regulations. Steve Bittenbender writes for BetKentucky.com. He spent years covering countless states as they adopted sports betting policies. There will probably be uh, some emergency or temporary regulations. And they can move forward at a more rapid pace without uh, the normal review process. And that apparently is what they're doing. Now, the expedited process very well could lend itself to the launch of brick and mortar sports betting by NFL kickoff. As for online betting, it's a bit of a different story. There's a little work that has to be done there. The online portion generally takes longer to launch. There's more back of house technology with the app. That's not stopping the companies who own Kentucky's horse racing tracks. They have the exclusive rights to run sports betting and have already announced partnerships like Keeneland in the Red Mile with Caesar Sportsbook and Churchill Downs with FanDuel. This is going to be a new and exciting era for Kentucky sports fans. We love our sports here. And sometimes passion requires patience. But it seems for now, it's just a matter of time. In Louisville, Connor Steff in the WHAS 1119 on your side. Kentucky Attorney General Daniel Cameron is heading back on challenges to Senate Bill 150. The broad bill bans gender affirming care for anyone under the age of 18, bans schools from teaching anything about gender expression, sexual orientation, or gender identity. It allows teachers to ignore a student's preferred pronouns. A judge recently temporarily blocked the portion of the law banning gender affirming care. Today, Daniel Cameron filed an emergency motion to rescind that injunction, saying it actually harms children of Kentucky. Meantime, he also released guidance on the new law, saying the Kentucky Department of Education's recent interpretation of the bill is flawed. He says schools do not have a choice when it comes to making policies about sexuality and concerns over Title IX violations are unfounded. In response, Commissioner Jason Glass of the Education Department says Cameron is free to offer his opinions on Senate Bill 50, but such matters of interpretation are settled in court. Glass goes on to say the General Assembly can provide greater clarity in the next legislative session. 
A growing crisis in Kentucky has now hit a boiling point. Today, we learned that foster children left with nowhere else to go are now sleeping in a government office building in downtown Louisville, the LNN building on Broadway. Here it is, the 10-story office building at 9th and Broadway is doubling as a shelter for children in state custody. The Cabinet for Health and Family Services confirms the trend in a statement telling us there has been a decrease in foster families who are open to accepting adolescents and teenagers with complex medical, behavioral, and or mental health needs. The LNN building has become an occasional site for hosting these youth, end quote. When they're there, the sta state says so is staff, social workers sleeping there, and supervising and you're trying to sell it to them, you're trying to make them feel loved because obviously they're, they're a foster child. And I've had kids look me straight in the face and say, Miss Ashley, why does no one want me? The state says the number of Kentucky children in foster care has decreased after peaking in 2020 at more than 10,000. Still, children are being sent out of state to get the shelter and services they need without enough resources available here in Kentucky.